Welcome to Broken News Daily's The Week in Weird. This week we'll go on a million dollar treasure hunt, we'll see a life-size plane made out of egg cartons, and we'll meet some offensive Ivy League jerks. Let's go! Warning, this episode might contain weird. Three years ago, New Mexico multi-millionaire Forrest Fenn was diagnosed with cancer. His condition led the 82-year-old art dealer to leave an interesting legacy. Realizing that he can't take his riches with him when he passes, he hid a treasure worth over a million dollars somewhere in the mountains near Santa Fe. Which is certainly a lot nicer than what another man from New Mexico did when he got a cancer diagnosis. This is not meth. The treasure is a 42-pound bronze box filled with gold, diamonds, and jewels. So how do you find it? Fenn hid nine clues in a cryptic poem titled The Thrill of the Chase in his self-published autobiography of the same name. Some of our favorite stanzas include Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Wait, far but not too far? That doesn't make any sense. Ugh! Why does finding a million dollar treasure have to be so hard? There'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water high. No paddle up my creek? That sounds like an insult. Is this treasure poem insulting me? If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. Well, this is an easy one. Clearly the poem is telling me to light the Santa Fe mountains on fire. Just like all good treasure hunting stories, this one has a twist too. After stashing the treasure, Fenn found out that he beat cancer. That's right, Fenn is now cancer free. But does this mean he's going to walk back up the mountains and reclaim his millions? No, Fenn is keeping his word and he hopes that the treasure hunt will inspire adventure in today's youth. Get your kids out in the countryside, take them fishing, and get them away from their little handheld machines. Which is great, but I sure hope the kids hurry up and find that treasure. Don't you realize? Down here, it's our time. It's our time down here. We have to find that treasure before Forrest changes his mind. Then we can play with our little machines forever. So good luck, treasure hunters. I only hope you find the treasure before me because it belongs in a museum. Two people in Great Britain have just completed a life-size model of the iconic World War II era Spitfire fighter plane out of egg cartons. The model is 36 feet long and required 6,500 egg cartons, 10,000 staples, 5,000 nails, 2.5 gallons of paint, and 450 glue sticks. 450 glue sticks? That's nothing. I once used at least 500 gluing macaroni to a paper plate in kindergarten. Glue sticks are terrible. The model was built by sculptor Charlotte Austin and architect Jack Monroe and was quite challenging to build. According to Monroe, the iconic plane's complex geometry and double curved surface made it difficult to copy. To replicate this, we have used a combination of traditional timber construction techniques and advanced digital processes such as laser cutting and CNC routing. The CNC routing factory was my favorite 90s one-hit wonder. The original Spitfire was built for speed to defend against enemy bombers and was the backbone of the Royal Air Force up until the 50s. And it's most famous for its role in the Battle of Britain and that one episode of Doctor Who with Winston Churchill and those angry robots. Isn't that pretty much every episode of Doctor Who? The model Spitfire was built for March 4th, an event for the Help for Heroes Armed Forces charity. The model is currently on display at the Imperial War Museum Duxford in Cambridgeshire. Which sounds like a place someone would invent if they were going to make fun of England, but I swear it's real. The model is very cool and built for a great cause, too. Plus, it's like Winston Churchill said in his most famous speech, We will fight at breakfast. We will fight them with our eggs. We shall fight with our oatmeal. We shall fight with our glue sticks. A fraternity scavenger hunt left in a printer is causing a stir at Columbia University. The scavenger hunt, believed to be written by the campus's Pi Kappa Alpha frat, contains offensive, sexual, scatological, sexist, and just plain annoying items. Wait, a fraternity acting like jerks? Never. A picture of a cop flipping off the camera is worth 10 points. In a Broken News Daily exclusive, we've obtained one frat brother's item.
Taking your picture in front of Chinatown's My Dick Barbershop is worth five points because, well, I don't think I have to explain that one. Making your own Harlem Shake video is worth 10 points because clearly the world needs more of those. Video of pledges piggyback racing on fat girls is worth 10 points because the fraternity that counts Jeremy Piven and Ted Koppel as alum can judge how people look. Hey, are pledges required to bring their own bad toupee or are they provided? Another item on the super fun list, taking a picture of a homeless person burning money. Because nothing is cooler than people whose parents are paying thousands of dollars in fraternity dues so they can have friends, making fun of how poor someone is. The list goes on to heavily objectify women, encourage theft, and to make people go to the bathroom in weird places. Hey, we here at Broken News are all for having fun in college, but come on, Pi Kappa Alpha, get it together, fraternity. That's it for this week. I'll see you weirdos around. Mm -hmm.